Hello YouTube, I'm David Frankel, I'm Duncan Friedberg and we're back in Brookside which has changed quite a lot since the last time we were here basically because of this whopping great relief road that was built here since the last time we came here in 2016. So this is the station, this is still here but the level crossing was rebuilt, this is now pedestrian only path and they built a new bridge for the cars to cross over and the playground that was there has all gone. I've been told the old locomotive who used to live there, Katie, has been moved to the Churnit Valley Railway, which hoped to get her up and running again, which would be nice. In the meantime, we've come back here to take a ride on the Brookside Miniature Railway. Hello, uh, Chris McKenzie. I'm one of the directors of Brookside Miniature Railway. Uh, we took over in December uh, and we run the railway with a lot of volunteers and dedicated people trying to keep it afloat. So in, in August 2018 there was a lot of uh, speculation and news stories running that Brookside was closing down. The Manchester Evening News published an article saying uh, that Brookside was closing down. What actually happened? We don't actually know why he left. Uh, it's my understanding Chris Halsall, who created all this, uh, was retiring. And so we were approached asking us if we wanted to take over. And of course, yeah, it's too good to lose. It's a fantastic site. So we got a load of volunteers and a load of like-minded individuals about. And we decided that we'd form a company and try and keep it running. So it never actually closed when it was false news, when they said we need a petition to keep it going. It was already underway that we were taking over then. Uh, of course it took a long time for him to take his collection of signs and his other things he was selling away from sign. So he stopped running in September and when his rent he paid up till we ran out in the beginning of December, that's when we took over. Uh, we did an awful lot of work and still continuing to, to restore it back to its former glory. We replaced three bridges, uh, the tunnel was collapsing, we managed to bypass that, um, a load of track, and then of course we've repaved here in the platform, a uh, new canopy, mm -hmm. and the work's never ended, uh, unfortunately. But we'll get there in the end and we'll keep wanting to improve it and take it back to what it was like in its glory days. With the change of management, the old steam locos were sadly sold off, as well as Brookside's grand collection of station signs. However, most of the bigger changes to the garden centre and the railway since our last visit have come about as a result of this, the A6 to Manchester Airport Relief Road Eastern Extension. When the new road was built, the car exit was closed and what had been the car entrance became the main access road requiring a new road to be built to the car park, crossing over the railway and the brook by a bridge. This resulted in the demolition of the old restaurant and the playground. Katie, the resident locomotive of the playground, has been sent to the Churnip Valley Railway for restoration. Little engine here, wasn't there? It's a decorative one.
An extension was built to the main garden centre building to the south to accommodate a new restaurant, resulting in the demolition of the abandoned loop line. Oh, so the old loop. We have a lovely family photo on that bench. Oh, when you used to be able to get there. And you're not anymore? Then, unrelated to all this, was the rather tricky business of the tunnel. So tell us exactly what happened with that, with that tunnel and what you've done. Oh yes, the, uh, the tunnel up at the top, when you go past the loco sheds, there's a very narrow tunnel. Uh, people used to graze their arms on it, but it wasn't actually a tunnel, it was a retaining wall, 60 foot long, with a, basically a shed roof on. And that retaining wall, we get engineering reports, and they said it was collapsing, uh, it could break any time. So from that day on we had to, we couldn't run through it. Uh, it would have cost an awful lot of money to strengthen it, but it really wasn't possible because it's so narrow raise your elbows on it as you went through. Now there's a coach shed at the side that was falling down, the roof was collapsing. So we decided to take that down. 160 tonne of aggregate went in mm -hmm. and we've bypassed round it now. So this is all new. At the time of our visit, the extra loop the trains usually go around via the former Bridge of Orkey station was closed, so we used the old bypass route. Uh, it looks like Bridge of Orkey station is gone. Yeah. That's going to be bad. No, it looks like it's gone. We also got to take a look at the depot where we saw some of Brookside's newer trains. So lastly, tell us about the very recent flooding that happened here just a few weeks ago. Oh yes, it, the site did flood in 2016 and then just two, uh, two and a half weeks ago, uh, on the last day of July, there was tremendous rain. It went very quiet and then suddenly uh, like a very slow tsunami swept across the side and flooded. Uh, the rain, the water came as high as the picket fence and we thought we'd lost everything. When we came in on the Thursday, everywhere is under six to nine inches of mud. The shop had been flooded uh, and it was just devastating. Didn't have time to worry though because so many volunteers came in. For example, Highly Miniature Railway just shut up shop and all the staff came here to help us. The ladies from Class Dress Shop said, right, we're cleaning out your shop, mopping it out. Brookside Pottery, 
were fantastic. They were here every minute, just cleaning and shoveling and helping. And people I've never even met before, people who ride on the train, just decided to come and help. Then we have our regular volunteers. They just lived here for three, four days. Adam Jeffrey came from uh, mid-England and came and did a load of welding for us. I, I couldn't name them all, there was just so many and it was brilliant. They all got stuck in and by Sunday, bear in mind it happened on the Wednesday, by Sunday at four o'clock we were back open as normal. And okay. everywhere had been jet washed, cleaned, everything was running, track re-ballasted, points repaired. Uh, the only trouble was one of the bridges, uh, too much wood had smashed the sides. We got that repaired that week, so wow. we're back up and running thanks to the great public. Alright, well thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks to the public.